Hi guys, uh, a lot of you enjoyed my game making video so I decided to make another one. This one's going to be a Minesweeper game. Because this one's a little bit more complicated, I'm going to make it into two different videos. The first one is going to have the basic game logic in there. And um, the second one is just going to um, add a little bit more graphics and make it more, um, more professional looking. So um, this is the first video and, and then in the video description below you can find uh, the follow-up second video. Okay, um, let's open up the terminal. Here we are. And I will create a Minesweeper. So this is going to be just in vanilla JavaScript and uh, HTML5. Uh, nothing too complicated. So here I am creating a, an HTML page. It's going to have a canvas where we're going to draw the Minesweeper. And um, let's just call it Minesweeper. And I will include a script where I will have Minesweeper JS uh, load up. And let's make sure that this loads correctly. All right, let's see if it works. So I'm going to debug it in Chrome. So here we go, the file is loaded. So I will create two, uh, two different files. One is going to be minesweeper.js, which is going to have the game logic, and then render.js is going to have the, the drawing logic of it. Okay, so in the, in the minesweeper.js, I'm going to have the size of the minesweeper. Let's make it 10 by 10 to begin with, and maybe I can change it later. Um, actually, that sounds quite nice. I think that's a classic Minesweeper, so we can we can keep that. And maybe I will, I will also want how many mines there will be. And then I will have a function to in it, which will start the game. And then I will also have a board where I will uh, keep all my um, board state, my current state. All right, and then um, I want to be able to render it. And so I'll have a function render, which will just uh, draw the board. OK. So how does, how is this going to look like? Well, board is going to have, it's going to have 10, 10 rows, each of which is going to have 10 columns. And then um, each of these items is going to contain, um, to represent one of the blocks in the, in the board. So let's fill in them, fill in the board. Actually, let me call that. Okay, so this is um, this is the number of rows. So this is the height. So let's call this y, just for clarity there. And then this is going to be x, and x is going to go up to w, and then plus plus x. And what I'm going to do is in the board of well, that's the number of the row, and that's the number of the column. Initially, I'm going to put just zeros there, um, so that that makes up the board. And um, cool. And then what I want to do is I want to generate um, the mines, the mine locations. So let's see how's this going to work. So I'm going to go fill in the board with the the mines. Yeah. So I'm going to go. Um, I'm on the board with the mines, so I'm going to number the mines. So mine is going to be less than mines, the number of mines. And for each of them, I'm going to find a location to put the mine into. Yeah. So um, it's going to have some x, and it's going to have also some y. And both of these are going to be random locations. So this is going to be math at random times. OK, so math at random returns a number from 0 to 1. So by multiplying it with um, w, I get a number from 0 to w minus 1, which I need to floor because it's going to be a float, floating point number. And the same I'm going to do with the y, y uh, variable, like that. All right, um, so this generates mines repeatedly, and I'm going to just put it there, put the mines there. And the mines are going to be represented by minus 1. So maybe make some constants for that. Um, or, or block mine, let's call it. So that's going to be minus one. And then, um, yeah. And then the rest of the, the numbers in the board are going to represent um, 
whether it was opened or whether it was, um, yeah, whether it was flagged, right? So I'm gonna have a block mine, a block, um, hmm, let's see how, how can we do this? Uh, I guess flagged can be, right, well, the board maybe can just contain the state of the mines, and I can have a different one for the, um, for the, for what the player has done, so. Okay, so the board can contain just what what mines are there and the numbers. And then the state can um, can be whether they were op opened or not. So state um, closed. It's going to be a zero. State opened. It's going to be a one. And then uh, it's also uh, there's also a state flagged, which is going to be a two. Okay. Um, so let's also um, put these there. So the state of yx originally is going to be state uh, closed and everything. All right, and then um, obviously because these are uh, empty arrays at the beginning, I need to I need to push something onto them. I need to push an empty array there. And here I need to also uh, go to uh, y and push zero, um, just so that we can create the respective elements. All right, so this is a uh, state closed. Yeah, that should be a good first version. Um, and then okay, and then this fills in fills in the board with mines. And the the next thing I want to do is I want to just um, well first of all because we want to have exactly uh, as many mines are uh, as are in this number. If it's already a mine, I want to uh, go on and find a different location for it. So I want to say, okay, generate these, go ahead and generate these, but um, keep generating un unless you uh, found a location which is not a mine. So if it's not a block mine. And then I also want to have a, uh, yeah, actually that's fine, I think. Um, and then the variables, of course, need to be here. Okay, so these this generates these variables, and then if it's not a mine, then uh, we make it a mine. Okay, so that's the first step, and then I want to fill in the numbers on the board. So um, let's go ahead and go through the board one more time, the same as we did before. And what I'm going to do is uh, I want to count the number of mines around block x comma y. So I want to say, let's go from minus 1 to plus 1. And then from um, minus 1 to plus 1 again. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to find the, actually let's call this dx for, for delta x. So the difference in x, and what this is, is doing is, uh, let's write a comment here because it's a bit complicated, let's say, uh, count the number of mines around uh, location x comma y. Um, of course, I don't care if itself is a mine, so if dx is equal to 0 and dy is equal to 0, then just continue here. Otherwise, I want to count that, that field, so I want to say y plus dy. Uh, x plus dx. Okay, so if this is a mine, mm, so let's keep it here. So if this is a mine, then I want to increase my count, and my count starts at uh, zero. Cool. Um, the problem here is that uh, potentially this can be out of bounds. So let's make sure we're not out of bounds. So y, y, or in bounds, let's call it. So this location has to be within the bounds. If it's within the bounds, then we count it. Otherwise, we ignore it. And this takes takes care of the case where um, where we are at the borders of the board. All right. So this is uh, the function in bounds. We just abstracted it. Let's uh, make sure that it looks right here. So how, what does it mean to be in bounds? Well, x has to be at least zero, and y also has to be at least zero, 
and then uh, we also have to respect the, uh, other, the other boundaries, so this has to be less than W, and this has to be less than H. Okay, so we have the count, and once we have the count, we can just uh, go ahead and put it in the board of uh, y, x, and that's that's the count. Right, so now that we have it in it, this creates a board that has mines, and it has also all the numbers filled in, from 0 up to uh, 8. So let's call in it, and this should create a Minesweeper board. Of course, we can't see it yet, but uh, let's see if this has any mistake. Uh, okay, so we do have a mistake here, uh, and this the state the state uh, has a problem. In and the problem is that we're not initializing it at the Y location. Uh, now it seems to be loading for a while. I don't know why that, why this is happening. Let's make sure that uh, it's not going into an infinite loop. Um, maybe we should just uh, open up the debugger here instead of using. Um, yeah, instead of using a uh, console log. Um, I don't know why. Yeah, it's not really, it doesn't seem to be loading it correctly. Yeah, that, that looks like an infinite loop. Right, so I've removed the init call, and uh, just to be able to open up the sources. And let's see what hap what's happening here. Let's see if it gets stuck anywhere. So I will call init manually, see what happens. So it's in the debugger. Let's move on to the next point. Okay, so this initialization is done, and then let's see if that's done. Okay, I think it's getting stuck in the uh, mine generation uh, loop. All right, so um, the problem seems to be uh, the while loop here, and what I'm doing is that I'm repeating while it's not a block mine. Well, actually, I should be repeating while it is a block mine. So if it doesn't find an empty cell, it should try one more time, but if it finds a cell that has a mine inside, uh, yeah, if it finds a cell that has a mine inside, it should repeat. But if it finds a cell that's empty, it should fill it with a, a mine. So that's why it was going on forever. Um, so let's make sure that this is equal. And now uh, we can freely call in it without a fear of an infinite loop. Let's make sure that it works this time. Okay, so it's loading. And it should have generated a board. And indeed, we have a board and it has uh, rows, and then let's look at the third row. It has a couple of mines. Um, yeah, actually I don't see any mines here, but hmm, these are ones. They should contain maybe minus one as well, but I only see ones. This seems, yeah, it seems wrong, and the reason is that uh, we should not be counting, we should not putting, be, put, be putting counts where mines are. So uh, yeah, yeah, let's fix that. Let's make sure that if this is a a block mine, then um, if it's not a block mine, then we should fill it with a number. Otherwise, uh, otherwise we shouldn't, and that should make it uh, better. So let's remove the breakpoints from here and uh, let it run and see how it goes. Okay, so this is the board, and indeed the first row has a mine here, and around it, it has a one and a one, and the rest are zeros. Okay, that looks good. Um, one thing I want to do is abstract out the counting function because this init function is getting a, a little bit uh, uncomfortably large. So let's uh, let's do the count or uh, yeah, uh, how do we call that? Let's say um, maybe we can call it count mines around x y. Cool. And, and then therefore this comment actually becomes irrelevant because the function name is now the documentation which is quite nice so let's move in this function here um, right so uh, this is, remains the same and then uh, we can still use the inbounds function the board is a global variable so that's fine and then the count functions the count variable is there we just need to return the count and then here uh, maybe uh, we can just say count mines around count mines around x comma y. So this should still work. Let's see if the board is accurate. So let's look at the third uh, third uh, row and indeed this one has a 1 around it and the one at, at the top or the bottom should be causing a 2 there. 
and that's actually correct. So this one, this minus one, and this minus one is causing a two here, which seems right. Okay, so this is the basic initialization phase. Let's actually go ahead and render that. So for rendering, I will need a. Um, well, actually, let me call that this W. I will call it. Um, I will not call it W. I will call it. Uh, calls for columns and h I will call it rows for rows and then uh, maybe I can replace the w with um, uh, with calls and let's make it ask for confirmation uh, actually yeah that's not very good let's uh, I want to re do a replacement on whole words that mention w and then I want to replace that with uh, the word calls and ask for confirmation. Yes, replace here, replace that, replace that, replace that. Okay, very good. And then the other thing I want to do is uh, instead of doing H, let's, let's, instead of doing W, let's just do H here. And I want to replace that with uh, the word rows. H is the number of rows. Yes, and ask for confirmation. So that's replaced, that's replaced, and that's replaced, and that's replaced. Okay, very good, because I want to reserve the variables W and H for the actual canvas size. So let's make this 600 and 600 like it was defined here. And that's that's my size in pixels. So this, this is related to the rendering um, JavaScript file, not related to the game logic specifically. Um, so in the rendering function, I want to go through my, um, through my blocks. Um, and then I want to render a specific block. So let's say render block. At location x y and uh, I want to draw a, a rectangle there yeah so um, I think it's called fill rex let's uh, look up the the documentation for that so that's the canvas uh, obviously I need to initialize my canvas so that's the basics Right, uh, and once we have that, I think I've called it canvas. That's nice. Um, then I can do fill rect on the context, and the fill rect has x, y, and width and height. Okay, that's that's nice. Um, that means I can calculate the block w and block h, the width of one single block and the height of a single block, and the width of a single block is just going to be, it's just going to be the total width over the number of blocks in a specific row, which is the number of columns. And then uh, block h is going to say h over rows. Okay, there we go. And so my fill rect should go um, to that specific location. So uh, let's call it mall to view x mall to view. Well, um, okay. So uh, x x. Mm, let's see. All right. So view view coordinates is going to be mall to view x comma y. So this function mall to view converts from game coordinates to rendering coordinates and pixels, and uh, so we can now uh, figure it out. Figure out where the block is going to be rendered. Okay, so let's make that function view or uh, mall to view. I'm calling uh, the Minesweeper JS the model and render JS the view. Uh, so I'm going to give it game coordinates x and y, and this is going to convert them to um, rendering coordinates. So I'm going to return an object that has an x, which is x times uh, block w, and y is going to be y times uh, block h. And so that's kind of easy to see. If x is 0, then that's going to be 0, which is great. If x is equal to exactly uh, calls, then this is going to divide out the calls and cancel out the calls of the x uh, with these calls, and it's going to return uh, w um, or w minus block w. Uh, right. So let's just uh, write it out. If x is zero, then the model court or so if if the mall uh, x is zero, then the view x is going to be zero. That's great. And the other case is if mall is equal to um, calls minus one then the view x is going to be w minus block w which is exactly what we want so that looks right um, one minor detail is that the y's are inverted um, so if y is zero it's at the top but 
I don't think that's going to be a problem for this specific game, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, so let's draw a rect, and um, it's going to have that size. Let's also define a fill style. Uh, let's make them maybe um, gray. So let's uh, use uh, hex coordinates for that, hex, uh, hex colors for that. Alright, so that fills in that. And let me actually also say strict style is going to be black. And then I also want to do a stroke rect. And I think this function exists, stroke rect. Uh, yeah. Right, so that looks that looks nice. It has a stroke rect, which is the same. Right, so the rendering function should do a render block for each of the blocks. So let's go through the blocks. Um, we have a for loop for that. In fact, we're writing that for loop many times. Maybe we should abstract it out through a uh, visiting pattern, visitor pattern, perhaps. Although that's, that's too complicated, I think uh, it's probably okay to just leave it like that. And okay, that renders a block, but I also I also want to say, yeah, actually let's leave it like that and see if that works to, to begin with. All right. So actually it doesn't seem to work. Uh, I'm not calling render, that's why. And now it's doing it. Uh, it's actually our Minesweeper. Everything is uh, closed. Every tile is closed, and I should be able to, to click on that eventually. It doesn't work yet. All right, so um, let's go ahead and make a controller to handle our, uh, our clicks. So I'm going to go ahead and create that new file, controller.js. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the canvas object, canvas, and um, add event listener on click. So when somebody clicks, when the player clicks on that, it should register the click, and it has some sort of event, which has a uh, mouse x, I think. Let's see, event, mouse x, mouse y, I think that's the way to do it. Uh, mouse move, show my, yeah, let's see, the stack overflow post. So the answer says client x and client y, that's right. Okay, so client x dot client y. Um, let's upload this guy, that's nice, thanks for the answer. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab these. So these are actually view coordinates, and I need to move them to, to translate them back into game coordinates. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, convert them into, into game coordinates. So for that reason I need my um, view to model um, x, y. Which is going to do the opposite of the the function above it. So it's going to take a a view x uh, from the hit test from the click that the user made, and uh, it's going to convert them back into into game mo game uh, coordinates. So it just needs to to divide by block w and uh, block h. Yeah, that's it. So we've got the x, we've got the y. I need to call, go ahead and call view to model, model x uh, y, and uh, that should return the uh, the model coordinates, and that's that. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and call the um, open block model coordinates dot x model coordinates dot y. Uh -huh. Okay, that, that looks nice, and that means now in the Minesweeper.js I can have a function called open block with an x and a y, and um, maybe I should have a comment here that says uh, hit test. It's really the simplest hit test that you can have in 2D space. So the open block function is just going to go ahead and uh, change the state uh, at this particular location to state opened. Um, but we need to actually check here if it was a mine or not. So go ahead and the, go ahead and look in the board. If this was actually a mine, if this is mine and the the player had tried to open it, then just alert game over. Otherwise. Um, and let's say playing is equal to false. So let's also have a playing variable which starts at true. And um, if we're not playing, 
then you can't really open another block. So just uh, return here. And in this case, I just want to reveal the board, which is something I'm going to implement later. All right, uh, so in that case, we just make it state opened, and I'm just going to go ahead and call the render function again. Um, but I don't want to make my, my game, uh, my, my model uh, logic dependent uh, uh, on, the, on the view, so I, I just want to make it agnostic of the render function. I don't want it to know about the render function, so I'm just going to move that render call to the controller here. All right, uh, that looks nice. Um, so that, that should actually register the click, open the block, and re-render. Now, of course, the rendering function doesn't take into account whether the block is opened or not, so we should do that. We should say, if the state of yx is um, state opened, did I call it state opened? State opened, that's right. Okay, if it's open, then we need to actually draw, um, draw the number, right? So we need to go ahead and draw the number. Um, so canvas, draw text, I don't remember how to draw text. Let's take a look at the documentation. This MDN website is really wonderful. Right, so there's a stroke text function. Um, that's exactly what we need, stroke text. And um, what it does is, strokes are given text at given x, y position, optionally with a maximum width to draw. Right, so the text is gonna be just the number. So that's gonna say board, a y x so if it's a mine it's going to show a minus one if it's a an empty cell it's going to show a zero uh, and if it's a uh, number it's going to show that number and the location is just going to be the view coordinates of course dot x and view coordinates dot y i'm not going to be providing a um, max width here and the other thing i want to do is just also uh, Actually, I want to fill the text. I don't want to stroke it. So fill the text with black. So that should do it. Let's see if we can open a cell. We can't. So let me just go ahead and debug that and see what's going on. Uh, what I want to do is go to the control and see if this is being called at all. So let's click here, and it's not being called. Uh, so potentially my add event listener call is incorrect. Add event listener. Did I mistype the function name? Add event listener, add event listener. I think uh, on on click. Let's see the example here. Uh, it's actually click, not on click. Uh, was a silly mistake. Okay, here we go. See if this works now. Right, it works. It's pulsing the debugger, and uh, well, the click is called, but there's nothing happening here. So I wonder if it changed the state. So let's go ahead again and open up that one. So that should have the cell 0, 0 in, in the model coordinates. So let's go ahead and walk through that. And then my model coordinates, it's 0 point something, 0 point something. So the problem here is that we didn't floor the division. Uh, it's an easy mistake to fix. So this should say math of floor over there and math of floor over here. Okay, let's try to do it one more time. Open up this one, play it, and it's still not showing, so uh, let me try one more time. Uh, so it's going to the model coordinates, it's zero, zero. So it's opening the block zero, zero. So see what this is doing. So let's step into the open block. All right, so playing is true, that's, that's correct. And then if it's a mine, well, is it a mine? Let's look at zero zero. Okay, zero zero is not a mine, so it, sh it should not be a game over. And then state yx, it should say state opened. That's right. And then it goes ahead into the render function, which should render that particular block. And for that state, it should draw the text. So let's see if it goes into that. Yeah, that's right. It goes into that, and it should fill the text, but it doesn't do it. For some reason. So the fill text, let's just look at the API one more time, fill text, and then here it has the text, it has the um, the coordinates as well, and these coordinates say 0, 0. Actually I think it should have worked. Uh, let me just go ahead and try it. 
ctx.fill text hello at zero zero and see if that works. Play it. No, it doesn't. Let's see, uh, fill style should be black. This doesn't seem to work at all. Let me just try and stroke it. I think I'm facing a problem with the API here. Stroke text. Okay, it doesn't seem to do it. I wonder why. Ah, I didn't set up the font, so it needs a font. Okay, that looks uh, like a plausible explanation. So let's try the hello now. Uh, I wonder why it's not showing even now. Aha, uh -huh. so now it's showing something. Yeah, okay. So that was the problem. Let's actually go ahead and set it here. So I will use, let's say, 20 PT Verdana. Is that the, fo the font format that you want? Yeah, okay. So let's try it. Now open up that one. Open up that one. Game over. Um, still not working. It's doing something. Aha. So it's showing a 1 at the cell above, even though I clicked here. Uh, I guess the the coordinates of the draw text API are the bottom left, the bottom left position of the, of the text that you want. Um, so we actually need to add, we need to add one block Y um, to, the, to the Y coordinate, or block uh, H rather. Right, so that's a one, it's a one. Oops, that's a game over, and that's a minus one. Right, let's try and play it a little bit. Okay, open up this one, that's a zero. So we can open up all these around. We should actually make it flood fill that. We'll do it in a bit. Okay, so this is a one, all these are one. So that should be clear. Uh, I guess this should be minus one there. Uh, actually not. Okay, that seems to be working, and that's a game over. All right, um, that that seems that seems correct. This one, for example, has a a mine across it. All right, so it's not the prettiest thing, but it's it's doing the basics. Um, right, let's go ahead and do the flood fill with the zeros. So if you open up a zero, it should actually open up all the blocks around it. So let's go ahead and do that. So if board y x is equal to a zero then what we want to do is after opening that one you want to go ahead and open a uh, block um, to all the ones around it so I'm just going to uh, go ahead and use the dx method from before it's going to start at zero and it's going to go up to calls now actually it's going to start at minus 1, and it's going to go up to 1, and um, here it's going to start at minus 1 and go up to 1 again. Here we go, and um, we're going to again calculate the y, y, and x, x, as x plus dx, and um, y plus cy, and if it's uh, in, in uh, how do we call that, in boundaries or something, in bounds, yeah? inbounds of xx yy if it's within the bounds of the board then we open xx and yy but um, only provided that uh, it's not already opened so that we don't go into an infinite loop so if the state of uh, yy xx is not opened then uh, you can go ahead and open that aha uh -huh. okay that looks right so let's uh, see if that works Right, so we have a nice opening here of all the zeros, and uh, that's looking good. That's looking good. All right, so this is clearly in mine. Let's open it up, and it says game over. Uh, let's try to actually maybe play a game. So uh, that should be clear, and then maybe this one should be clear as well. Um, let's see, this one should be clear. Oops, I made a mistake there. Ah, yeah, that's not clear. Uh, why though? That seems wrong. Um, phew. 
my minesweeper skills are rusty. So this is definitely a mine. This is also definitely a mine. So that should be clear because that has a two. Maybe you got confused about what I clicked on. I'm not sure. Yeah, it did get confused about what I clicked on. Uh, I wonder why. Is it maybe because of the small offset of the board? Uh, let's actually take a look at that. That seems like a bug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and introduce some CSS here. Let's call it style of CSS. And I'm going to center the canvas to see if there's something wrong with the mouse coordinates. Uh, so margin auto and display block. All right, here we go. And what I want to do is just uh, go ahead and uh, check if the controller is providing the correct coordinates. So here's my controller, and here's my um, my coordinates. So let's go here, and that should say close to zero zero. Uh, but in fact, it's two one three, and that's twelve. So it actually is taking up all this position here, all of this width, um, into account, and that's incorrect. So we should actually take it out. And we should say canvas dot offset left, canvas dot offset top, and that should fix it. Let's see. So over here, client X is now two thirty nine. Let's go ahead and um, uh, let's see what the offset left is. Okay. Yeah, that seems right. So let's restart it. Start it over. Click here on the very corner, and um, we'll go ahead and go ahead and uh, play it over. Okay, that seems that seems right. Let's actually also click on this one, this corner here. It should open this one. There we go. Okay, that that seems to have worked. Alrighty, let's try this one. There should be a mine, and we've got a game over. That's right. Okay, so this concludes the um, basic game logic. And in the next video, I'm going to make it look a little bit more beautiful um, so that it looks more like a game. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this first part. Um, seems like the game is uh, getting somewhere. And in the second part, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more um, graphics and make it look uh, more professional. So um, click on the description uh, below to go to the next part.